welcome to my living environment class. I'm sure you're all very excited to get into the laboratory and start doing all sorts of experiments, but first we have some safety and ethics to discuss. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this video is just going to cover the basic uh, dress, equipment, emergency response and safety that we'll be practicing this year in lab. So let's just start with what you should and should not be bringing to lab in terms of apparel. We're going to want to minimize exposed skin to the highest degree possible, which means lab coats and gloves at all times and goggles. Eye protection is extremely important. I would like to see them covering your eyes, not around the neck or on your forehead. And that also uh, includes long hair is a fire hazard and could drip into chemicals. So please keep it up and away. Now, do not have large areas of uncovered skin. This includes your feet. So sadly, even when it gets warm, please refrain from wearing Crocs, sandals, flip-flops, the like. Um, bring food or drink into the lab space is a huge no-no. Uh, you could put chemicals onto the food and then put it in your mouth. And I don't think I need to explain how that could be bad. No baggy clothing that hang far off the skin. This is a fire hazard and as well as hair could also droop into chemicals without you noticing. And no jewelry on arms, hands, and wrists. This does include Apple watches as well as any of these things could trap chemicals against your skin for much longer than you realize. And now if we're dressed properly, we still have to behave properly. So please no roughhousing, no horseplay or disruptive behavior in lab. There's going to be equipment and chemicals out and any spills could result in beginning emergency procedures. Only act on your lab with your teacher's permission. If you go off on your own, you may find yourself in unknown territory. Always follow your procedure as not doing so could result in injury to you or others. Any violations of the rules put forward in this presentation may result in your removal from lab and a zero on that day's activity with no chance for makeup. We also need to talk about how we handle equipment safely. As you see on your right, we have a series of labels here. These are the labels you will see on just about everything will have one. So you need to know them and you need to know how to handle your glassware. Always use the smallest size of glassware uh, applicable as they are easier to handle. You will be using a pencil and labeling tape if we have multiple beakers so you can keep track of what is where and to ensure that when things are mixed, the proper thing is always getting put where it belongs. And when you finish your labs, please ensure that the caps to all the chemicals you use are fastened and secured as to prevent spillage in the future. And under any circumstances, do not leave flames unattended or reach over them. We do not want anything to catch on fire, be it the school or you. Uh, do not grab or use and mix chemicals from the storage shelves unless given direct permission. I don't want to see any students grabbing things for themselves out of the cabinets. If I do see this, I will ask you to return to your seats and you may be removed from lab. And do not eat or drink anything out of lab glassware under any circumstance. You don't know what was in there or how well they were cleaned and ingesting these chemicals is very adverse to health. We also need to focus on maintaining a clean workspace and equipment space. So ensure your workspace is clear and free of spills from after your lab and before it because you don't know what the groups before you have done. You also need to ensure your hands are being thoroughly washed after cleaning any space or after handling chemicals, even if you think you are perfectly safe. A lot of these chemicals are invisible once they dry but can still leave chemical burns on your skin. So ensure that all equipment at the space is supposed to be there. And if you feel something is out of place, ask me. I will remove or add any necessary components to your workspace that can aid you in completing your lab. And when you finish, you need to make sure all of your materials are disposed properly. This means broken glass needs to go into the sharps container at the front of the room. We don't want our janitors emptying our trash and getting cut by unknown glass that's hiding within. Liquids should never be poured down the sink unless explicitly stated. These can damage the pipes. Look for chemical disposal jugs instead. These are usually labeled and will be highlighted by me before lab and are airtight to prevent fumes from escaping 
and are able to be properly disposed of. Now, in case something does go wrong and accidents happen, so don't feel bad, you need to come to me immediately. All breakages or possible equipment issues can lead to personal injury or injury of those around you, so let them be known. If you break something, do not clean it up yourself or do not clean spills up yourself. If chemicals happen to enter your eyes, well, first, why aren't you wearing your safety goggles? But now you do need to report to the eye watch station where you will have to hold your eyes open with your fingers and flush them out with cold water for a full 15 minutes. And if you get chemicals onto your clothes or on your skin, these will need to be removed by standing under the shower with all the effective articles of clothing removed and you getting doused for 15 minutes. And I promise you, it's also very cold. Now, if worse comes to worse and we do need to evacuate the lab, there is a big red shutoff button at the front of the room. Do not hit it unless it is an absolute emergency. You need to know your exits so you can evacuate in a calm fashion so that we're not running over each other or clogging the doorways. Think like a fire drill. And you need to be aware of where you are in the building so if the others need to be directed to you, that can be done as efficiently as possible. And if you injure yourself or someone near you is injured, let me or other teaching staff know ASAP. And you need to recognize and remember the location of your fi first aid kit, your fire extinguisher. Always remember, pass, that's how we'll use it. You want to pull the pin at the top, aim at the base of the flames, spray the fire extinguisher by pulling the trigger, and sweep back to forth, P-A-S-S, -S, and the fire blanket. A little easier to use, you're just going to take it out of its case and cover the flames quickly to smother them. Now, no one knows you better than you, so let's turn that self-knowledge into safety. Throughout your labs, we're going to be working with uh, tasks that require you to be a little dexterous in your hands, handling small instruments as well as flames and sharps. If you feel a safety concern, please inform us and we will work to find you an alternate activity. And we will be offering latex-free gloves. However, if you do have any known allergies, please make them known as soon as possible and review the list of materials given with each lab. Be on the lookout for any substances that are personally adverse to your health and let Mr. Hayes know right away. And when we finally get to the real fun stuff and we get to go out into the field to collect samples, you do need to follow proper procedure. The environment around us can be fragile and we need to ensure that it is maintained. So check with your teacher before you bring anything back into lab. Give animals and nature itself space. Do not create disturbances and make sure you're washing your hands thoroughly. Do not have any interaction with wild animals. They could seem sick or distressed and aggressive. And do not go off on your own without informing the teacher. And please never leave my eyesight. There are certain animals out in the wilderness we will encounter that are endangered. Same with plants. If we just damage or destroy them, it could mean legal fees or repercussions. So always show animals respect. They are part of nature just like we are and they need to be taught and handled as equals. Always ask permission before handling organisms in the classroom as we will be hosting a pet this year. They're fun to look at, but you need to make sure that you're treating them with respect. Remember that animals can get sick just like you. And if you notice any odd behavior, make this known to me. And once you finish handling animals, always wash your hands. When encountering wild animals, again, do not disturb them. Never handle a wild animal. And if you feel unsafe, inform your teacher immediately so we can vacate the area. And since we will have the wonderful opportunity to perform a dissection upon a frog this year, we need to learn to respect them before we dissect them. Understand that this animal gave its life so that you can further your study. It needs to be treated with respect, and it does deserve respect. Perform only upon it what is required in the lab. Any unjustified cutting or mutilation of the frog will result in an instant removal from lab. No exceptions. That behavior is absolutely unacceptable. Once you begin your dissection, remember, your animal is likely covered in hazardous preservatives. Ensure all safety apparel is worn, gloves, coat, and goggles. And we will be using sharp cutting instruments, so always remember to cut down and away from your body while making incisions. And of course, 
If you feel uncomfortable or not able to perform a dissection due to personal beliefs or opinions, just know that they will always be respected and your instructor can put forward an alternate activity to study physiology. And always remember, we're here to help you. Don't go off on your own. Always ask for help. We're happy to do it. We want you to be safe and we want you to have fun. And that's so much easier when we are all behaving ourselves, following our procedures, and knowing when we need a helping hand. After this, we are going to begin our lab safety activity. So you're just going to uh, label these given symbols for part one and the given safety equipment for part two, along with their uses. And for part three, I have given three scenarios of haphazard science practices that I would like you to review and correct. Thank you guys so much, and I look forward to running a wonderful year of science experimentation with all of you.